Let's examine acceleration in polar coordinates. In the previous video, I derived this expression. This is an expression for the velocity vector in terms of r hat and theta hat. They are the unit vectors that we're using for polar coordinates. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to do the same thing, but for the acceleration vector. And the acceleration vector is a little more complicated. Why is that the case? Well, it's because these guys actually depend on the angle, and the angle in general could depend on time. So we have to add all these extra terms to make sure that these guys are uh, accounted for, and the changes in those guys are accounted for. If you haven't seen that previous video, make sure you watch it. You can find it in the link in the description below. So let's have a look over here. What we're going to have to do is we have to differentiate all of this with respect to time. Let's define acceleration. So acceleration, this vector, is the time derivative of the velocity vector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this definition uh, from this relationship that we derived in the previous year, I'm going to put that over here, and we're going to differentiate that with respect to time. And then we're going to get terms that include these guys, these time derivatives. And that's why I've written these guys over here. These are other relationships which we derived in previous videos. So make sure you watch all of those videos before you watch this derivation, otherwise it might be a little confusing. So let's have a look at what we need to do next. So let's write this uh, expression over here in terms of r hat and theta hat. So we need to have d dt of our first term, our radial component is r dot r hat, and then we need to add to that this component, that is the tangential component. That's r theta dot theta hat. So we've got the radial and tangential component. And we're going to have to differentiate this with respect to time. Now, do we see uh, anything that depends on time in this expression over here? In fact, all of these guys depend on time. r and theta, in general, can depend on time. They are the coordinates. And the coordinates, in general, they can depend on time. So if we're, if we're mapping out the trajectory of a particle with polar coordinates, r and theta could be changing. And they're going to have derivatives that could also be changing. So r dot and theta dot, they could also be changing. And they could also depend on time. And the unit vectors, as we talked about before, they also depend on time. Because they depend on the angle. And if the angle changes as a result of time changing, then these guys are also going to change. They're going to point in different directions. They're going to move with the particle. So the tangential direction uh, depends on the angle of, of the particle relative to the origin of the coordinate system. So let's apply this time derivative to each of these guys. We're going to have to use the product rule for differentiation. When we use the, the product rule, we're going to get two terms from this term, and we're going to get three terms from this term, because there's three guys in this product and two guys in this product. So let's write down all of those guys. I'm going to write that in the line uh, below, because it's going to take up some space. So this is all coming from the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is just the time derivative of velocity. Let's go ahead and do those time derivatives. So first of all, this first term is going to give us, if we differentiate r dot, that's going to give us r double dot. This is the second derivative with respect to time of r. And we'll leave r hat unchanged. Then we're going to differentiate r hat. Let's do that. We get r dot, r hat, and I'll put a little dot above r hat. And this is just going to be shorthand for time derivative of r hat. We can see that this is actually equivalent to this guy over here. We're taking the derivative with respect to time of r hat. I'm just going to put a little dot above here. This may look a bit clunky. We've got a hat and a dot. But this is just saying we're taking the time derivative of the unit vector. So how is that unit vector changing with respect to time? So that's what we get from this first term. We first apply the derivative to r dot. We get r double dot. And then we leave r dot alone, and we just differentiate r hat. That gives us r hat with a little dot. Now let's get the three terms from this uh, second term over here. And that's going to be, first we're going to differentiate r. It's going to give us r dot. We leave the other two alone. We don't differentiate them. That's just r, uh, r dot, theta dot, theta hat. Then we've got to differentiate the middle guy, theta dot. And that's going to give us theta double dot. So we're going to have r theta double dot times theta hat. So can you see what's happened over here? Here we've differentiated uh, just the first guy, r dot. And then we've differentiated the middle guy. And now we've got to differentiate the last guy. And what are we going to get? We're going to get r theta dot times 
theta hat, and it, it's going to have a little dot over here. So we leave the first two alone, and then we just differentiate this guy over here. So these three terms came from this one term. We just applied the product rule for differentiation. There's one dot over here. We've got two dots over here because there's one existing dot, and we've got a dot over here. And this dot notation is just a shorthand notation for time derivative. And this is, I think, the, the original notation that Isaac Newton actually used. And this notation over here, this is the one that Leibniz likes to use. So this is called the Leibniz notation. That's called the Newton notation, Newton dot notation for the time derivative. So now we see where all of these terms have come from. So what we need to do is we need to look at this term. We need to look at this term. And we need to substitute these guys into those terms. And then we can group some terms together, and we can get our final expression for acceleration in polar coordinates. So let's do that. First of all, uh, this guy is going to remain unchanged. We're just going to have r double dot, and we're going to have r hat. This guy is going to be changed a little bit. So we're going to have r dot, but then this is theta dot, theta hat. So in place of this guy, I'm going to put theta dot and theta hat. So we're going to have r dot theta dot theta hat. So you can see that theta dot theta hat, that is equivalent to the time derivative of r hat. Now, this guy doesn't have any uh, derivatives on the unit vector, so I'm just going to write it as it is. We're not going to change it at all. And you can see that r dot theta dot theta hat is exactly the same as this term. So we're going to ha actually have uh, a factor of 2 in front of that term when we group the terms together. So we've taken care of the first term, the second term, and this third term. Now let's have a look at the last two terms. This term doesn't have a derivative on the unit vector, so we can just leave that alone. So we're just going to have r theta double dot theta hat. And what about this final term over here? What's going to happen to it? Well, you can see that we have a time derivative on this unit vector. Over here, we didn't have a time derivative on the unit vector, so we just carried it along. So it's just the same. But this guy, we have to... Uh, make a substitution, we have to say this guy is equivalent to minus theta dot r hat. This is where a minus sign is going to be introduced. It comes from this derivative uh, of theta hat. So let's do that. When we introduce that minus sign, what we're going to get is minus r theta dot. But there's not just going to be one factor of theta dot. We have an existing factor of theta dot over here. We're going to have theta dot from here, and we're going to have another power of theta dot. So we're going to get a theta dot squared. And we're going to have r hat. So what has happened over here? We have grouped together two theta dots. There's a theta dot from here and a theta dot from here. So this is actually multiplying r theta dot by minus theta dot r hat. So we have an r hat. Check. We have theta dot times a theta dot. That's theta dot squared. And we also have a minus sign. And we have an r. So this is all five terms. Now we have all of these terms. And now let's group them together uh, and make sure that uh, all the groupings are uh, done with the unit vectors in consideration. So we're going to consider the unit vectors, and that's what we're going to factor out. So first, let's find all the guys that have r hat. So where are all the guys that have r hat? This guy over here has r hat. Uh, this guy has theta hat. That's theta hat, theta hat. And here we have r hat. So the one with the minus sign that has an r hat. So let's write that down over here. So what we're going to have is, I'll open up the brackets. We're going to have r double dot minus r theta dot squared. And all of this is multiplying r hat. So this is in the radial direction. This is the acceleration in the radial direction. We have this r double dot, but then we also have a minus r theta dot squared. So this minus sign, uh, if you remember, comes from this minus sign. So that's, that's where this minus sign has been carried over to. Now, let's group all the guys that have theta hat. So we have theta hat, theta hat, and theta hat, all the middle terms. But these guys are actually identical. So we just have two copies. If we have two copies, we can just put a factor of 2. So we have 2 times r dot theta dot, r dot theta dot times theta hat. So that is these two guys. They combine together to give us r dot theta dot theta hat. And what about this term? We have to include that as well. Oh, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll factor this guy out the front, uh, or at the back, actually. And we'll just include this guy over here. So we have plus r theta double dot. So that's r theta double dot. And I'll put that unit vector theta hat outside. 
So we want to factor it from both of these terms, because both of these terms actually are multiplied by theta hat. So theta hat multiplies r theta double dot, and it also multiplies r dot theta dot. And there's also a factor of two. So this is the acceleration in the radial direction, and this is the acceleration in the tangential direction. I'll put all of this in a box. So this is the acceleration vector in polar coordinates. This needs to go in a big box. This is a very important equation. So what's going on over here? We have managed to write the acceleration in terms of r, theta, and derivatives of r and theta, and also these guys, r hat and theta hat. These are the unit vectors that we're using for polar coordinates. What does this look like for Cartesian coordinates? Well, for Cartesian coordinates, what we actually have is the acceleration is a lot more simple. It's a lot more simple in Cartesian coordinates. We just have x double dot times the i hat uh, unit vector, and then we also have y double dot times j hat. So we just have the horizontal and the vertical direction. So all we have to do is take the second derivative of each of those uh, coordinates, so x and y. But this is not, not as simple as this uh, scenario over here. We do have a term that is uh, kind of reminiscent of these terms. We have r double dot, but we also have all these mixed terms where r is being multiplied by derivatives of theta, and there's a, there's a squared over here. What I want you to do is I want you to check the units of all of these terms and make sure they all have units of acceleration. So all of these guys have to have units of acceleration. It's clear that this one has units of acceleration. We have a length, and then we're taking the derivative twice. But what about these guys? These guys have angles and we've got the rates of how angles are changing. So that's actually what we're gonna do in later videos as well. We're gonna have a look at these units and we're gonna compare the units and make sure that all the units have the same units as acceleration. But this is a derivation of uh, this expression over here. This is the expression for acceleration in polar coordinates. I'm gonna keep examining it in later videos. If you liked this video and you find this content uh, very informative and useful, make sure you watch the other videos in this playlist. You can find all those videos if you click over here.